Today I will share my 25 weeks drawing plan for how to draw the figure. For that I'm going to share this sketchbook here with you, which is my figure drawing sketchbook where I'm mostly focused on the figure. Number one to two is gesture drawing. What you need to do is practice quick gesture drawings to capture the essence and movement of the figure. What you try to aim for is to be loose. The line of action is very important. So basically the longest line that goes through the figure, you, you want to express motion and energy. There's one important concept we also need to talk about when we talk about the gesture, which is CSI. So what you want to do when you draw and learn a gesture, you want to focus on using only C-curve, S-curve and straight lines. Whenever you draw a, a line of action, which is the longest line going through the body, what you want to do, you want to identify where the hip and the shoulder line is. And then you want to try to connect these lines through using these type of lines. So that could be a elongated C-curve line or straight line. But what's important is that you figure out how to express motion and positioning. And don't expect too much of you. It's just about the gesture. How are the proportions? We want to kind of like think, of course, about form and everything. But what's important is to emphasize and figure out how is the positioning of the figure in space and where are the elements placed. And everything else is something that we can improve later on. So that could be a very simple gesture. And I just used C-curve, S-curve and straight line. This is very important to practice. So gestures are also great to figure out um, just first positioning of figures, doing things very fast and loose. Uh, here I was actually, uh, <laughs> uh, I was actually planning a uh, birthday card for my brother. He's a tennis player. So I drew him some little naughty tennis drawings on his card. Um, yeah, again, the gesture is great for figuring out positioning for uh, movement. And that's really what you try to do to aim for these S curve straight straight lines and C lines. Great exercises for this is quick poses. So basically, as mentioned, find a good resource on the internet and then do 30 seconds to a minute gesture drawings and practicing basically capturing the essence of the movement of the figure in quick expressive strokes. And exercise number two would be action lines. So basically focusing on drawing action lines to convey the dynamic movement of the figure. What you should do is always experiment with various poses, emphasizing the flow and energy through the body. Week number three to four is three dimensional forms. So when we talk about three dimensional forms, we are talking about to explore the three dimensionality and, and the geometric forms to construct the human mass. In order to understand these basic shapes, you have to contribute basically to build this structure by yourself. And this is why the repetition there is very, very much important. You see, for example, this figuring out how to draw the figure from below. What are the planes I'm seeing and how is the contribution and the development of the masses while drawing them? Use the gesture as the base. So this is why we do this before. And then we go in and try to work in the three dimensional masses. So it is really important that you understand to apply the principle of adding volume and form to the figure. What I like to do sometimes when I don't understand something, I try to break it down. So I just draw a hip or I just draw certain parts of the figure because you also have to maintain proportion. You have to maintain where are things going and you also have to maintain the gesture. So it's really important that you do this on a regular base. To also give you two exercises. So first one exercise could be constructing basically the human body with basic shapes. So everything from cylinders, spheres, cubes, things we talked about in previous videos, but also to use forms as a foundation before adding any details. This is really important. We now take the thing we just drew before, take these basic principles here and applying them on top. Now I have this gesture, I have this flow of movement. Where is this figure positioned in space? So a ground plane is always good to add. Where is this arm going? Is it coming towards us? Is it going sideways? In order to learn this, lock something in where we think that might be a three-dimensional form that could convey this. The head, we could give a box because we have a front plane where all the elements are and a side plane. The hip, a box as well and so on and so on. Week number three and four are made out of these applications. So what we want to do now is we practice the gesture. Now we want to practice the 3D masses, the three dimensional forms. A second exercise could also be kind of like sculpture drawing. So basically imagine the figure as a sculptor and you would draw it out of various angles, emphasizing the three dimensional aspect. This is why I like to draw figures out of 
different perspectives because it's really hard but it also trains you in a certain degree. Week number five and six is anatomy fundamentals. We basically want to start now focusing on understanding the basic anatomy, basically trying to understand the human figure. We cannot only try to understand the masses, we also need to understand what's below. To begin with the skeletal structure, the major muscle groups, we can try to find any online resources and also going through all the anatomy books, all the videos we can find about that stuff and really practicing it. This is also something we spoke in previous videos, um, how to draw the skeletal bone structure, and we have this on the YouTube channel. But this is how something like this could look, where you just focus on one part. Here is one page I focused just on the spine, trying to understand how many vertebrates has the spine, how can I communicate this? What do I need for this? To give you two exercises, one could be basically just to draw the skeleton, create any detailed sketches of the human skeleton, paying also close attention to the bone structure and the joint connections, and also try to identify landmarks. Again, something that we did with the gesture, basically figuring out, okay, where's the shoulder? Where's the hip? Where is the head? How's the positioning? Why is there an S curve, etc., etc.? Exercise number two would be basically muscle study. Doing basically the same thing, but for muscles. Drawing the major muscle groups in the human body, focusing on understanding on how muscles are overlapping, interacting, and basically using also different chaining methods. Anything that makes this whole learning process interesting for you is really important and crucial. This is also something I spoke before. Again, what I like doing as a warm up, often doing drawings from med imagination where I try to recap the things I studied the day before or an hour before. Same goes for gestures from imagination, basically thinking about, okay, I have a basketball player. How would I draw a pose, a gesture out of my head? So basically trying to do and make these things interesting for you while studying is really, really important. So week number seven and eight is basically proportions. So we try to study the proportion of the human body, practicing measuring relationships between any different parts. We also wanna use, again, the references to figure out what is the issue we have. I can share, for example, that I always had trouble with arms. I always drew arms too thin. Sometimes I had trouble with legs that I kind of like gave legs more of a more of a cone shape rather than something which is more cylindrical. These observations you only do while practicing those things. How could that look in terms of exercises? I would advise one exercise would be comparative measurements. So basically you select a reference image and measure the proportions of a different body part in relation to each other and you try to pay close attention to the size relationships of different things like the head, the torso, the arms, figuring out, okay, if I do something a bit more curved in perspective, how are the relationships? Because these things are the things you have to get in your head. And so the next week will basically be then measurements, proportional variations, study different body types to figure out, okay, um, how to draw the figure in various proportions, elongated limbs, shorter torso, and also experiment with exaggeration while maintaining these balances. For the foreshortening week, we want to try to explore the challenges of drawing figures in foreshortening. We try to practice foreshortening exercise to understand how perspective affects these appearances of body parts. So for example, if you have a foot which is closer than the second foot, for example, how it is when hands are very close to us when we see a figure from below but we see the feet from below as well when a leg comes closer to us and you see you do mistakes in there which is great because uh, you can learn from these mistakes and it makes it much easier from here to understand camera is very low but i also try to push here the foreshortening look how big the foot is and look how small the hand is in comparison this distance here is what we call foreshortening. So two exercises which are great for foreshortening is basically foreshortening studies. Again, you wanna get some references from foreshortened poses and basically trying to draw them. I also can recommend the Graphite Studio references for foreshortening poses in general because they have high quality poses there. Also jumping poses, which are pretty cool where you have very strong foreshortening in there. And what you wanna do, you kinda of like focusing on practicing this very accurate and depicting the compression and elongation of the body part. So how long elements become and get really important. Also what you want to do, you try to maintain and focus here on proper proportion while doing this. This is why foreshortening is so freaking hard. You try to push the foreshortening, but what you also don't want to mess up is the general proportions of these elements. And this is so easy to do, right? Um, this head, for example, is for my taste a bit too small, but 
it kind of like helps to push this for shortening. The other thing to practice is their dynamic poses. What we always tend to do in the beginning is to draw generic poses or simple poses like standing poses. That's all great. In the beginning is always fine, but always continue on challenging yourself and try to draw harder poses is something that I would highly, highly recommend because this makes also the drawing quality and the outcome of your drawings much, much higher. Talk about dynamic poses, I'm talking about creating dynamic scenes with the figures in action, um, anything that incorporates foreshortening, of course, and convey a sense of depth and movement. Experiment with the exaggeration of foreshortening and push it to a visual impact. So next up is clothing. At some point, we want to go over to draw figures in clothes because, of course, if we want to draw a character, we cannot only draw naked characters. What we want to do, we want to start incorporating clothing into our figure drawings. We want to pay attention on how fabric drapes and folds over the body and also experiment with different clothing styles and textures. So not only clothing, but also material. I started to draw knights at some point. The more detailed it becomes, the more challenging it becomes for me to draw on top of proportion, for shortening, the measurements, stylization, and shapes, right? And we try to do that over and over and over again. Sometimes it doesn't turn out right, Something, something's off, but it's part of that practice. So how could this practice look? Basically, simple exercises would be stuff like fabric studies, draw the figure in various poses, focusing on drapery, folds, and different types of clothing, experiment with uh, both loose and tight-fitting garments, basically something that you are liking. So anything with leather, could be metal, um, whatever it is that you prefer to draw. The other thing would be basically character design. So of course character design itself is a very big topic and it's not something that you just can practice in one exercise. What I would always try to do is try to draw something more in your way. So looking for original characters by combining different clothing styles with diverse body types where you draw something from a reference and then try to draw it yourself again in a different pose using everything that we just spoke about. The other thing would be consider how clothing choices reflect the personality of the character. You can try to push that as far as possible. I always try to challenge that. I take my time really figuring out how hard is it to draw samurai armor? How can I indicate little things and how can I be more efficient because I always want to reuse that information. I don't want to draw it blindly and copy it. I want to burn this information in my head so I can replicate it for my own drawings. And then sometimes you can do something more simplistic and you can mess up a face and you mess up a sword. It doesn't really matter. It's just matter that you do it and that you try it. And next up is light and shadow. What you try to do, you also at some point you want to push your medium to the maximum. Study basically light and how it interacts with the human body. Learning these basics of shading rendering to basically apply depth to your figure. And you want to experiment with these different light scenarios, right? So something which is more diagonal, something which is from the top. But also what you want to do, you want to kind of like master your own medium. This also depends what is your medium. Uh, this is not a page would I would show around, but it's still part of my process. It's part of my of my process of getting better, trying ink drawing to figure out, okay, what would happen if I would render this figure with gray, with a lighter tone, and then how would it look if I would keep everything white? It's also part of this light and shadow practice. Making your own light scenarios where you think about one single light source, or you try to play with more dramatic light. It's something where I do a lot of mistakes and I try to hide a lot of stuff, but I find interesting shapes and it's something I never would show someone or kind of like put them in an exhi exhibition. But for me, it's something that brings me closer to maybe I want to find in my rendering process. A good example for testing and shading, figuring out my medium, right? What works, what doesn't work, figuring out what is the, the pen size that works great. Or maybe something where I experiment with two different colors, figure out how can I make water dripping on the body? How can I make sprinkles? How can I find something that I maybe never have seen before and I want to make that more special. Here I bought the wrong ink. It turned out to be very interesting because it was a very nice red ink and I experimented with different hatchings and different communication of volume because what we want to do, we want to push our drawing at a certain point to a more interesting part, right? Good example for the light and shadow week. Also, before I forget this, please make sure to like and subscribe this video 
to support any future videos. I'm also building a drawing online class at the moment. So if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning more with me, make sure to check out my website and sign up there to get the newsletter when the course is out. And sometimes you have these happy accidents because I found this rendering process where I added the gradient with horizontal volume lines to make this more popping off in contrast. Next up is facial features. Since we spoke a lot in the previous episode on how to draw a face and there's also a 20 week drawing plan, I would kind of like point to that. So if you're interested in learning to draw the face, please watch this YouTube episode because it's full of information like, and I kind of like not want to repeat everything. But of course, practicing facial features is really important. It's not about only simplification, but it's also about facial isolation. So you want to draw individual facial features like eyes, nose, mouth, everything we did in the other episode. But we want to also figure out how to do a certain expression. How can we make someone look angry? Figuring out, okay, how can I do a certain expression? You know, um, how can I convey something? And really paying attention to any subtle changes in the face and what that does. The next will then be hands and feet. Um, I like to incorporate hands and feet focusly more in my full figures to save some time. But what you can do, you can basically cut these parts off and just draw hands holding things. Concentrated, intricate details of the hands and feet and study the structure proportion in various poses of hands and feet. Any exercise like this could be hand studies to draw the hands in various gestures, position, paying attention to intricate detail, fingers and the palm. Experiment with foreshortening and experiment with different hand poses. Same goes for the feet, anything that is more dynamic and interesting. Heels, anything that makes this more interesting to look at. Week number 20 to 21 would be backgrounds. Yes, of course, we also have to talk about backgrounds. Maybe we focus so much on drawing a really nice figure but then we completely mess up the background because we never practice it. If you have the feeling of you maybe mess it up, draw it very small, plan it ahead, figure it out first, draw it without the character, this is something you can do and then put the character inside. What we want to learn is to integrate these figures into the environment and practicing drawing figures in a certain setting, considering perspective and composition. Exercises like this could be to draw any figures in certain settings, consider any interaction between figures in, in the background and also experiment with different perspectives and composition. And you can have something where you completely go crazy in terms of perspective. It's important that you do that because you will never achieve what you maybe try to get if you do not try that in your sketchbook. And this is why we have to sketch. Something I personally really like is to create little narratives. This is without a background, but creating narrative I find is really important. Developing any little stories where you place any characters, and it could be also a creature, but you tell a story where one frog is annoying the other frog. Yeah, you can also start small when it comes to backgrounds, just adding maybe a ground plane and slowly adding things to going closer to what you maybe want to achieve. Drawing a lot of knights and I just had an idea for a story of a knight. First, I would draw these little small frames to really figure out, okay, what is actually the thing I want to do these little thumbnail drawings, right? And then draw it in a bigger scale. But also I have to add background, right? Even though it's just indicated in my brain, I could kind of like scan this and digitalize it and make it clean and know what each element would be. So number 22 to 23 is probably one of my most favorite weeks because it's basically drawing from imagination. Because I find these drawings from imagination much more interesting, even though they're not perfect, but it's more interesting because we can develop story, but we can also see what is actually inside of us. I would absolutely highly try to incorporate this into the routine. This is why I wrote it down here for week 22 to 23. It could be anything from memory sketching, so going somewhere. Um, I remember that because I was in Korea when I do this, we went to one of these G25 stores where you could kind of like buy a noodle soup and make it warm in a microwave, uh, which is a concept uh, which is not so common here in Europe, but it was very interesting. And in a hotel room, I tried to draw the whole scene again. And this was really in the beginning of doing that for me. An exercise could be choose a simple pose, an action of a reference, where you just draw something again, or you try to draw a full scene or something that happens. Recreating of any pose from your memory, um, compare your memory sketch to the original sketch after you identify the areas which are basically not correct, right? Again, 
the missing knowledge and then filling the gap with the reference. Exercise number two would be basically to invent any scene featuring a lot of figures, doing any activity scenario, and drawing a full scene by imagination and focusing on visual engaging composition. Don't expect anything crazy from yourself. Just let yourself go. And you will see, okay, I still have to work on my figures. I still have to work on my legs. I still have to work on perspective or shapes or whatever it is. Focus on doing visually engaging, interesting stories. And I think if you do that, it's much easier to have fun while drawing and continuously drawing because it's not easy to motivate yourself um, over a long period of time to continue to practice drawing right? Because it's also practice. And I feel these drawings from imagination, they are very, very helpful for this process. These figures here also, most of the sketchbook is basically by imagination. Doing scenes, story do I want to tell? What are the things I want to show? Could be weird stuff, anything that is inspirational in textures and clothing, anything scenes white, positioning, scenes that happened, could be funny, could be stupid, it doesn't really matter. Um, and sometimes something comes that you keep in your head and sometimes it could be situations you had with your parents and last but not least because i promised this would be week number 24 to 25 would be basically advanced techniques such as dynamic poses storytelling through figures and experimenting with different styles know that this is a huge topic for a lot of people this only works if you look at artwork that you like and ask yourself why do you like it and then you have to study so for me it was always mobile and Kim Jung-ji. And these are the two people you can always find in my work. Kim Jung-ji, Kim Jung-ji, Kim Jung-ji. Mobius, 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 everything cowboy related. Mobius, Mobius inspired after looking all these Mobius books. And the exercise look like this, dynamic compositions, where you tell a story, um, anything which is maybe unconventional. Compositions to explore any impact, anything that you've never imagined you would draw. And try to draw figures maybe in a different style also. Simplification. And sometimes you have to draw ugly stuff to figure out okay that's maybe a direction i like doing this is maybe something i don't like doing but for this you have to try and try again i hope this 25 week drawing plan is useful for you give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel if you're not a follower yet thanks for watching have a nice day happy drawing and talk to you soon bye bye